Another tool that's often used by geneticists are karyotypes. And a karyotype is showing you a picture of the chromosomes. And what happens is those chromosomes, when they isolate them from a cell, they're all a mishmash of 46 little lines, and then they pair them up, um, looking at their length and the position of the centromere and their banding patterns as well. And then once they're paired up, you can look at um, the number of chromosomes, and if you see any irregularities, you can also determine the sex. So we can see here, we have our 22 pairs of what we call somatic chromosomes, which are the chromosomes that are always found in homologous pairs. And then down here, we have our sex chromosomes. This would be the karyotype of an individual who is a male because he has both an X and a Y chromosome. So you can see how the Y chromosome is a lot smaller than the X chromosome. Karyotypes can often reveal an incorrect number of chromosomes. This condition is known as aneuploidy or non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is the process that produces the incorrect number of chromosomes. Um, and this results from an error, um, usually during meiosis, in the formation of the egg or the sperm cells. An example that you are probably all familiar with is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is also known as trisomy 21. Tri 21. So rather than being two copies of chromosome 21, one from the mother and one from the father, there are three, as we can see down here. Um, and you can also see where it says 47 XY plus 21. That means that this individual has 47 chromosomes, an X and a Y, so male, and an extra copy of chromosome 21. So that would be a notation that a geneticist might use. This image is showing what happens during non-disjunction, so that error in meiosis. Um, if we look over on the right-hand side over here, right, here's normal cell division. So what should be happening where the chromosome pairs separate so that each gamete that's produced ends up with one copy of each chromosome. Over on the left, we can see right here is our error. So this blue chromosome pair right here didn't separate correctly during meiosis. So you could end up with an extra copy of a chromosome or a missing copy of a chromosome. The extra copy is known as trisomy, when you have, so you would end up with 47, 47 chromosomes, like in Down syndrome. A missing copy is monosomy, one. So you only have one copy of a chromosome. In this case, you'd, an individual would, human would end up with 45 chromosomes. Um, most of the time when non-disjunction occurs, the offspring is not viable, so it cannot live. Um, it might result in something like a miscarriage or um, something you know along those lines. But there are certain situations, certain genetic disorders, that are a result of non-disjunction, so having an extra chromosome or a missing chromosome. And we most often see these with chromosomes 13, 18, 21, and then the sex chromosomes too. And remember, besides just extra or missing chromosomes, can also have mutations. So an altered chromosome structure, or permanent change in the DNA. We focused mostly on point mutations earlier in the year, um, but Remember, we could also have duplications, inversions, when part of it gets flip-flopped around, a deletion, insertion, when one part of a chromosome actually gets inserted onto another part, um, or a translocation, when two chromosome parts switch places. Um, and these types of mutations could all potentially show up on a karyotype or on a full genetic analysis. So when you're doing your genetic disorder research, definitely pay attention to what is causing that genetic disorder. Is it a point mutation, a duplication, deletion, um, non-disjunction? Because that affects the inheritance.